Thing for the team, having done a 225.799, but the EBM Giga Racing car of Adrian De Silva, the Malaysian driver in the Porsche 911 GT3R, is closing in. And the 56-year-old who's been GT racing since the year 2008 and was third in the Malaysian Super Series 11 years ago, trying to put himself up at the top spot. But it's Bao Jinglong who has gone fastest for the R&B Racing Team. The 36-year-old who's been racing in the Porsche Carrera Cup Asia for the last decade has just gone uh, provisional fastest in his particular car. And you are looking at the number 26 machine, the Be Quick Absolute Racing McLaren of Henk Keeks, the tyre driver who is currently trying to set the pace. I'm Jake Stanson, and we're going to be your guide over the course of the Spang 12 hours when the race itself gets underway in a little under four hours from now. It really is going to be a sensational battle for all of the competitors here today. It's not going to be a particularly intense race battle uh, until we get to the qualifying session itself's conclusion. And as you can see from the timing screen in front of you, there are only six cars that have set the pace so far. So that is obviously going to take us to a very intense part of the race, but we have our qualifying one drivers out on the circuit at the moment. Adrian De Silva has just put the EVM Giga machine up on the top spot on a two minutes nine five five nine ahead of the tire driver Piti Budambakti in the AIM Motorsports machine number 91. Andrew McPherson, the Australian, has put the AMAC Motorsport team into provisional third position ahead of Francis Chia from Hong Kong, the Moderna Motorsports team in fourth. And then it is uh, Harmony Racing that find themselves currently in fifth position. So Harmony Racing's uh, team obviously making good strides forward. And uh, Harmony Racing finds their driver David Chen uh, currently in fifth position ahead of Jens Klingman in the, AI, uh, in the AAI motorsport car, I should say. Then Li Jia in the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket Machine in seventh place, currently ahead of uh, Wei Ji Liu in the AAI Motorsports sister car, the number 90. Then Sandy Stuvik, the former single-seater racer for Craft Bamboo, is currently ninth. Andrew Harianto for Absolute Racing in tenth position. And now we're getting a bit of a shuffle of the deck as Adrian De Silva has put the EBM Giga number 16 into provisional pole position. A good run from Adrian De Silva as the 56-year-old puts his car up to the top spot. The final two cars in the list so far are the B-Quick Absolute number 26 of Henk Kicks. And at the back at the moment, it is Douglas Q in the Viper Nisa racing car, which we are expecting to have a fairly solid run for the Aston Martin Vantage, the man who was third in the Sepang 12 Hours TC class back in 2015, so knows this place very well. Up to the top spot for the moment, though, comes the Craft Bamboo Machine of Sandy Stuvik who uh, switched to GT Racing in 2017, but it was only returned to racing last year after hiatus uh, brought on, I'm assuming, initially by COVID, but has actually done a significant job since then. Up to the second place now has come David Chen, who has uh, put the Harmony Racing Machine into second place for the moment. Andrew Harianto in the absolute car is currently third. And then Bitti Bilambakti has put the AAI Motorsports machine number 91 in fourth ahead of Francis Gia in the Moderna and Adrian De Silva in the EBN Giga Porsche, currently in P6. And the battle between the top six cars is currently at 3.8 seconds, but there is a quarter of a second separating Sandy Stuvik and David Chen. Jens Klingman crosses the line, though, and puts himself up to the top spot for the moment as we watch Pitti Bilambakti in the 91, the BMW trying to work itself around the course and this tight and twisty section of the mid-sector. This race circuit, formerly the host of the Malaysian Grand Prix from 1999 all the way through until 2016. So this place has hosted many different types of racing over the years, but certainly it is great to welcome GT racing and an endurance event back. I should point out that for this first race back, although the name of the Sepang 12 Hours continues uh, for various reasons which are far too long-winded to go into here, the race distance will actually be eight hours in duration. And it will still be a great welcome return to sports car racing at the top end. As Bitti Birambakti is trying to put the BMW up at the front end of the field. So far, 
with Thibaut de Bracti, he's put the AAI, the AAI motorsport car into sixth position. The sister car is second, so there's definitely a chance to go up to the top spot. But it's the Kraft Bamboo of Sandy Stuvik that has gone fastest so far. Jens Klingman in second place. Remember that all three drivers in the car will be setting a qualifying pace throughout the course of qualifying. There's a little bit of a dust kick up from Bitti Bidambakti coming across the line, trying to beat 2 minutes 6.9. And there's a 2.070 for Bitti Bidambakti. Sixth position as he comes across the line there on a 207.052. The fastest time though is a 2.047 for Sandy Stuvik. And that is the time currently to beat. And with five minutes to go in the first of our GT3 and GT Cup qualifying sessions, it's obviously broken down into a three session run. And then obviously on the combined times, the grid will be set. We'll be able to build up to the race over the course of proceedings. And that's a car slowing on circuit. That is the 88 coming to a standstill. That's the leading car. Sandy Stuvik in the Mercedes moving out of the way and pulling right off to the inside line. Now, hopefully that's just to let the faster cars come through on a flying lap rather than having a mechanical malady of some description as we are watching the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket car of Li Jia, the Chinese driver, the sole car in the GT Cup. But their task is a very simple one. They just want to see how far through this race they can go up into the top 10. So this inaugural event is obviously going to see only 13 cars battling away for the eight hours in duration rather than 12 hours in duration. But it's a good starting point in the hope that next year we're going to have double, maybe even triple, the starting grid. You've got to remember that this sport is still reawakening in Asia, having had the difficulties of COVID-19. It's only in the last uh, six months or so that the countries at this part of the world have actually started to open up to international visitors, never mind to international competition. And we are told that the EBM Giga car of Adrian De Silva has just had its fifth lap deleted for track limits at turn 14. So you can see how hard drivers are starting to push through timed qualifying. As we look down at the crew once again for Kraft Bamboo, who are currently at the top spot. Sandy Stuvik having set the pace in the Mercedes AMG car. And we are watching the BMW of Piti Berenbakti. At least we were. Now we switch to the McLaren. So that is the McLaren. trying to work its way through the course of uh, proceedings. Uh, my apologies, that is actually the Audi. I do apologize, there are no McLarens in the field this time. There was meant to be a McLaren in the field, but unfortunately a final minute pullout. That is actually Henk Kicks in the Be Quick Absolute Audi, having set a best time of a two minute 8.7. So about four seconds off the pace at the moment, but there is still time for that to change. And this is obviously the difference between the GT3 competitors and the GT Cup runners. So Henk Kicks is trying to get a little bit more pace out of the car as he pushes himself to that third and final sector, sweeping through the left-hander. Drop him down through the right, then you get to the brakes, the brakes, the brakes, and you turn in as you go through that radius. As we look at the changeover of driver now, Sandy Stuvik has brought his car into the pits and it is now going to be Jeffrey Lee that gets into that car for the second qualifying group because obviously there are three 15-minute sessions back-to-back -back where all three drivers get their turn in the car. And Hank Kicks is trying to finish off the lap quite nice and tidy here. Out of the final hairpin, and this is a significantly faster lap from him. So we'll see where this rises, Hank Kicks. From eighth position, does it? Well, a two minute 9.421, so not actually an improvement in the end for the Audi, as into the pits comes the BMW. Now, this is the number 91 car. That is Piti Birambakti having brought his car into the pits, and he will change over to his stable mate down there in pit lane. So obviously, this is the final chance really out there on the course for the last couple of competitors 
in the run. It looks to me, though, as though pretty much everybody has set the pace they're going to set from their first qualifying session. Unfortunately, car number four, the R&B racing machine of Bao Long, has had its fifth lap time deleted for track limits incurred at turn four. So that's game over for that particular lap. And Andrew Harrianto, who we're looking at out on the circuit at the moment in the absolute racing Audi, is now going to another fast lap in the hope that they can find an additional 0.642 of a second to knock Sandy Stuvik and the Craft Bamboo off the top spot. There is Andrew Harrianto running in third place for absolute racing in the Audi at the moment. And as you can see, his best lap so far is a 2.053, but the time to beat is a 2.047. And as the time runs down to zero now, Andrew Harrianto is desperately trying to find that little bit of extra pace to put the car up at the top spot. There is the Porsche getting ready for its driver change. And of course, every car is now going to change drivers from the previous session. But the man who's trying to get up to the top spot is Andrew Harrianto. Sector one, he did a 26.8. A 27.7 in the second sector and now 37.907 in the third. So this could be enough to get to second place ahead of the AAI Motorsport BMW of Jens Klingman. Might even have a shot of knocking the Kraft Bamboo off the top spot. So Andrew Harrianto committing to this final hairpin. So the absolute racing crew are really hoping to get up to the sharp end of the dais. But I think this is going to be tight as Andrew Harrianto trying to finish off the lap no I think he's bailed I think he's realized that the lap time is not going to come in the end so they've bailed on this final lap as we look at the Viper Niza Aston Martin of Douglas Koo making his way back into the pit lane so it looks to me as though it's going to be from the first session at least Sandy Stuvik in the Kraft Bamboo machine who sets the pace in the first group so Sandy Stuvik the 27 year old from Phuket in Thailand who only switched to GT racing in 2017 and has actually returned from a three-year hiatus of racing, has gone top spot for Kraft Bamboo. Excellent work. The AAI Motorsport Machine of Jens Klinkman in second. Andrew Harrianto put the absolute Audi in third in front of uh, David Chen for Harmony Racing. And then Baj Nong, fifth place for R&B. Then in sixth position, Pitti Birabakti for the AAI, um, uh, the AAI Motorsport BMW. I'm going to trip over that all race long. I know I am. Francis Chia and the Moderna crew in seventh. And then Henk Keeks for Be Quick Absolute is currently eighth. And then Adrian De Silva in the EBM Giga car is ninth. And then we have Wei Chi Liu in the AAI Motorsport number 90. Three cars from that one team in this race. Uh, they are currently 10th. And then Andrew McPherson, the Australian, puts the AMAC car in 11th, the number 51. Ligia in the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket car is 12th. And then the Viper Niza Aston of Douglas Q in 13th position. So that is the provisional qualification after Q1. But there are three qualifying sessions in total. So obviously there is plenty still to do. There's the provisional classification. And as you can see now, drivers have already started to change across for their second drivers but that is by team certainly the result after the first qualifying session craft bamboo from aai and the absolute racing team in third ahead of the harmony racing and r b racing squads so five different teams in the top five places and we're getting ourselves ready for qualifying number two so there is the provisional result from the first qualifying run and that is by class. So this is just the GT3 class alone. And the eight cars that are competing in that one. From the leading Kraft Bamboo car all the way down to the Viper Niza car. Then we have the four cars for the GT3 AM category. Led by the AAI Motorsports car of Piti Bin and Bakti. Francis Chia for Modena. The second car of Chili Wei of AAI and then the AMAC car of Andrew McPherson and then comes the sole GT Cup car and that is the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket of Ligia. They did a time of 2.12.1 in the end so almost a full eight seconds uh, slower than the pace set by Sandy Stuvik in the Craft Bamboo. So there's still plenty of time to come for things to develop and things to change. If you've just joined us, you've only had uh, one qualifying session missed so far. 
But uh, there are three qualifying sessions in total. So obviously there is still more to do and more to explore as we get ourselves up ready for the start of a fascinating situation. And the battles are raging. If you're watching us on the YouTube stream, you are very welcome indeed, and your company is very much appreciated. And it is uh, great to be with you once again for more great sports car action from the Sepang circuit. And it is absolutely delighting uh, to join you. Jake Sanson here with you for qualifying. I'll be joined during the race itself by Sean Henshelwood. And we are delighted to go through the motions of this first qualifying session at the Sepang 12 hours for seven years. It is great to return to this fantastic event. And we are very much indebted to the crew at top speed and all of the organizers uh, to bring this race back to fruition. It's been a long road to get back to the Sepang, uh, Sepang 12 hours, I should say. As you're looking at the Moderna crew, Francis Gia put the car through its paces in qualifying one. And the very fiery Porsche in terms of livery is going to be trying to go for the GT3 AM category run. As you can see, the Hankook tyres, which is the control tyre across the field. 13 cars to battle away with the Hankook tyres. And obviously in an eight hour race, uh, the three drivers that will compete for each car are definitely going to be put through their paces. So who's who in the Sepang 12 Hours 2023? Well, we have an interesting lineup of competitors uh, for each car. The number four, which is the R&B racing team, is uh, one of the most prominent uh, competitors to discuss. And they have a fabulous team of drivers uh, in that particular squad. They have Lu Wei, who returned to racing in Porsche Carrera Cup Asia last year following a COVID hiatus. There's Ye Hung Lee, who is uh, the reigning Porsche Carrera Cup Asia champion, who won the title last year, age 32. And their Chinese teammate, uh, Bao Jinlong, who is uh, currently a very seasoned campaigner in the Porsche Carrera Cup Asia and has been since 2014. So they picked a really strong team over at R&B uh, to battle away for this race. And it'll be fascinating to see what happens to them as they duel away for another strong run. Uh, so they are there or thereabouts. As we look at the 101 crew, that is the FM Motorsport and Silver Rocket team. And of course, they are the sole competitors in the cup category. And that is uh, Chan Sai Wei, who is uh, going to be there. Also known, of course, as Simon Chan. So Simon Chan will be joined in the team by Li Jia and Sean Dong, the Hong Kong driver, who is the Super TyQ STX champion from 2020. So there's a good amount of skill within that particular squad and uh, some good performances. This is a very exciting field. You've got uh, drivers who have competed in Formula One, in uh, the DTM, in the World Touring Car Championship, and in various different categories, all featuring on the grid for this one race. So there is some good talent uh, all the way through. Just to remind you, the tyres for the weekend, they're using the medium dry compound of Hankook F200, the C53 compound. If it does rain, and it's uh, definitely going to be interesting at Sepang as it does, if history is anything to go by, they're using the Z207 W52 compound of wet tyre, should they need it. And it's definitely going to be a very interesting uh, battle uh, for any driver that has to change onto the wet tyres through the course of this weekend. Continuing the runners and riders in this event, the AAI Motorsports BMW M4 GD3, the number 15 crew, has a very uh, seasoned campaign of competitors. Uh, Kevin Chen, the man from Chinese Taipei, who is 44 years of age and has raced in everything from British Formula 3 to GP2 Asia and the World Touring Car Championship. He raced in the Macau Grand Prix in 2009. And uh, he is sharing his... Fantastic BMW M4 GD3 with a 32-year-old from Heidelberg, Jens Klingmann, who was the Italian GT champion last year, won the Formula BMW ADAC championship all the way back in 2007, and has already had a busy start to the year, racing in both the Dubai and Daytona 24-hour races so far this season, and we're only in March. And their stablemate is Jesse Kroon, the Finnish driver, who won the Daytona 24-hour GTLM class in 2020, of course. And five years ago, he won the Asian Le Mans series in the GT category. So very well-qualified team of three there in Chen, Klingman and Kroon to captain the number 15 AAI motorsport car. Over at the EBM Giga Racing team, they've got a strong lineup as well. Adrian De Silva, who's just qualified the car in the first group, who was third in the Asian Touring Cars back in 2009. Three years later, he was third in the Malaysian Super Series. 
and he's been racing in GTs ever since 2008. So the 56 year old, definitely a very seasoned campaigner and one to watch out for. And they've got a mixture of youth and experience in that particular car as well. Because Nazim Asman, the Malaysian, who is still just 21 years of age, this is going to be his first race in GT for six years. He's done a combination of Euro Formula Open, BRDC F3, Formula 4 in Italy and Spain over the years. And last year, of course, he did selected races in the FIA Formula 3 Championship for high tech on the Formula 1 bill. So in terms of racing international events, Nazim Asman is no stranger to doing that. And they're sharing the car, uh, both De Silva and Asman, with the New Zealander Reed Harker and the 27-year-old Kiwi from Auckland. He was second in the Toyota 86 Championship in 2017 in his native country. He's been a multiple karting champion in New Zealand and he's been racing in GTs uh, both back home and internationally since 2018. So that's a very strong lineup for the EBM Giga Racing team. There is obviously the team that went fastest in the first qualifying group to consider, and that is the, or tried to go fastest in the qualifying group, I should say, and that is uh, the Absolute Racing Audi squad with a very competitive uh, team of drivers as they get themselves to go to the end of the pit lane. The pit lane has now opened for qualifying two. I was going to talk about the Absolute Racing trio. Andrew Harianto, the Indonesian, who's won the Audi R8 LMS Cup Championship in the past back in 2018 and was also the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Middle East Amateur Champion in 2017, so knows very much about racing at this sort of level. Uh, Yu Kui, the Chinese driver, who has been racing in everything out here, Formula Masters uh, in China, Formula 3 Asia and Porsche Carrera Cup Asia. So definitely has been working very hard through his uh, career, the 22 year old. And they're up against the man uh, they're up alongside the man, I should say, who actually led the European Grand Prix in 2007, being the only, I'm fairly sure still, the only driver in Formula One history to lead the only race they've ever started. And that is Marcus Winkelhock, the German driver, who was the GT World Champion in 2012, has won the, Nürbur the Nürburgring 24 hours three times over the years. So they couldn't really have asked for Andrew and Kwai for a better stablemate. Uh, at the Be Quick Absolute Racing Team in their Audi, uh, they have three fantastic competitors and it's the team that won this event last time back in 2016 so it is the race winning team that has been able to unite and team up again for the be quick absolute racing audi number 26 and that is henk kicks peter cox and christopher Haze. three drivers who definitely know their craft they all won the sepang 12 hours together seven years ago but this is henk kicks first major race since 2019 Peter Cox, of course, is an ADA CGT Masters champion and former Spa 24-hour winner back in the 90s. And Christopher Haase, well, he was the Blancpain Series GT champion in 2012 and also won the European FIA GT3 championship back in 2009. So in terms of skill, uh, that's one of the strongest lineups uh, in this entire field. And there is the number 26 car, uh, which is currently being driven by Peter Cox. So Peter Cox is putting the car through its paces. Who else is on the starting grid? Well, there's still plenty of names to talk about. And in the number 51, AMAC Porsche, you've got the Australian Andrew McPherson and uh, his teammate William Porter. And then the New Zealander is the third man in the car, Andre Heimgartner. So again, a mixture of youth and experience. You've got a GT World Challenge Australian champion pairing in McPherson and Porter. And the former of those, Andrew McPherson, was also the Blancpain Asia GT3 champion back in 2019. And they've taken on the 27-year-old Andre Heimgartner to strengthen the lineup. He was the BNT v 8 champion back in 2018 and 20. And he's also a two-time Formula Ford New Zealander champion. And I'm always of the opinion, as I'm sure many of you motor racing aficionados as well, is if you can win in Formula Ford, you can win in anything. That is a no slicks, no wings, single-seater championship with very little compact, uh, contact patch on the road. And if you can handle that car, you really can uh, work your way up the ladder to race anything. Uh, the Viper Niza racing team and their Aston Martin, Douglas Q, Dominic Ang, and Jasmine Jafar. Those are names that will be familiar to those of you who race and watch racing uh, over in Malaysia. Of course, Douglas Q was third in the Sepang 12 Hours Touring Car class back in 2015, so almost a decade ago. Uh, Dominic Ang is the Asian Le Mans Sprint Cup GT champion from a year after that in 2016. And then Jasmin Jafar, many people will know him through his uh, work up the ladder of single seaters. He was the former BMW Asia champion back in 2007. He climbed all the way to the World Series by Renault uh, years ago. By I can remember talking about him in fantastic fashion during the 2013 season after his uh, horrendous accident at Monza, though, 
Uh, Yasmin Jafar was able to continue to make progress and he is now, of course, in that Aston Martin Vantage in what is now his 10th year of GT racing. The AAI Motorsports number 15 is currently at the top spot for Jesse Kroon. Uh, Nazim Asman has gone second in the EBM Giga car and then Peter Cox for Be Quick Absolute third position, although was, but now the sister car has come up to third for Yu Kwai. So Yu Kwai, the young man from Hong Kong, has made progress. Still going through the who's who of the Sabang 12 Hours 2023, uh, Jeffrey Lee from Chinese Taipei. He is uh, the 52-year-old uh, who is in the car. He was second in Chinese GT in 2019, and he was the vice champion of the Asian Le Mans series uh, GT class in 2016 as well. Liang Jitong is his teammate, the 30-year-old from Beijing, Lamborghini Super Trofeo European Pro-Am champion in 2017 as well, so definitely knows what he's doing behind the wheel. And we just saw in the first session uh, Sandy Stuvik, the young driver from Thailand, uh, taking that car uh, to the top spot in the group. And the 27-year-old switched to GT racing in 2017, having been heavily involved in single-seaters prior to that, as high as GP3. And that's an off there for Yin Yu Chen in the AAI Motorsport BMW. So that's going to compromise them a little bit. The number 88 car, by the way, has had a time deleted for track limits at turn four. That is Jeffrey Lee in the Craft Bamboo, who we have literally just been talking about. Uh, now, let's talk about the AAI Motorsports cars, the BMW du uh, duo. Uh, you've got Chi Li Wei, Shi Wei Shi, and Jin San Chen, uh, an all Chinese Taipei grid uh, in that particular number 90 car. Uh, in the case of uh, Chi Li Wei, uh, he raced in Chinese GT and the 25 Hours Fun Cup in 2019, and this is his racing comeback. Uh, similarly, Shi Wei Shi hasn't actually raced in motorsport since the Asian touring cars back in 2001 and 2004 uh, according to my records so this is quite the comeback for Shi Wei Xie and then uh, Chen Junsan has also had a, a very long hiatus this is his first season since COVID-19 but was the Asian Le Mans series champion in class uh, during the 2017 and 18 season and despite being 60 years of age is still uh, ready to uh, make a mark. It's worth pointing that out actually. There's quite a few drivers on the grid who are using this opportunity to come out of a hiatus. I don't want to call it a retirement as such. It was kind of a, an enforced rest uh, due to COVID-19. A lot of drivers couldn't travel internationally and really Malaysia is one of the countries that's really starting to reopen its doors to motor racing as a sport in general. So we are watching now currently the 216. This is the Porsche from Modena Motorsport. This is the car being shared by John Shen, Francis Chia and Christian Chia, the Canadian. And for John Shen, this is his first race since 2019. Francis Chia was racing in the Porsche Carrera Cup Asia last year. This is also Christian Chia, the Canadian's first season since COVID-19. And he was the Chinese GT champion in 2019. So when he took his hiatus thanks to COVID-19. He was on a bit of a roll at the time. You can really start to see the pressure piling on here from the number 26, the Be Quick Absolute Racing Car of Peter Cox, the Dutchman, trying to find that little bit of extra speed. And we're still over in, only in the first section of the course, really. And in the first sector just gone, Peter Cox just set a 27-0 and a 27-6-9-4. But up to the top has come Alexander Imperatori. So Alex Imperatori has put the Harmony Racing Car up to the top spot. I was going to talk about them uh, very shortly indeed, but there is the number 90 BMW, I do believe. So that is the all Chinese Taipei car going through. But up to the top spot has come the Harmony 488 of Alexandra Imperatori. As we currently look at the 90 going through, I believe that is the AAI Motorsport car of Chen Jin San. The sister car, of course, is uh, Chen Yinyu. And they're currently 7th and 8th, that team, trying to put their cars through the paces in timed qualifying. Now, who were we up to in the Sepang 12 Hours Who's Who? We were going to talk about the number 91 car, so very fitting that we see it on screen. Chen Yinye, the Chinese Taipei driver. Piti Birumbakti, the 43-year-old from Thailand, who was the vice champion in Supercar Thailand uh, 14 years ago and seventh in the last Sipang 12 hours, seven years ago. Uh, then their teammate is another Thai driver, and that is Tanat Satyan Tirakul, 
and he was second in the Bonpan GT Asia silver category for GT3 drivers four years ago. So we're going to have to watch out for Tanat Satin Thiraku. And I'm sure he's going to do a fantastic job back behind the wheel once again. Uh, then we get to talk about the crew from Modena Motorsport, the Porsche, the trio uh, of John Shen, Francis Chia and Christian Chia, who we did talk about a little bit earlier on. And then the Harmony Racing Ferrari, that's the one that's currently topping the timesheets in the second group. That is uh, Chen Weian or uh, David Chen in the Harmony Ferrari, third in Asian Amor in the GT category 2019. And this is his first season since COVID-19. And they're sharing with Alex Imperatore, the 35-year-old from Andili in Switzerland. Although he is based in Hong Kong nowadays, of course. And he was the Porsche Carrera Cup Asia champion back in 2012. And also won the six-hour of Zhuhai uh, back in 2011. So knows what to do. And their stablemate is Wu Ruhua in the number 488 Harmony Ferrari. And then, of course, the three drivers we heard about from GT Cup. Uh, Chan Sai Wei, Li Jia and Sean Dong. So there you go. You now know every single driver that is going to be competing in the Sepang 12 hours. We're currently four minutes and 46 seconds left of qualifying for driver number two in each car. And it's Alex Imperatore that leads the way in the Harmony Ferrari from Jesse Kroon in the AAI Motorsport BMW. Yu Kwai in the Absolute Audi. And then Dominic Ang has currently put the Viper Niza car in fourth position. It's up to third though because car number four uh, that is the R&B racing of Mohamed Afriki Kwan. Uh, unfortunately, that car has had its uh, lap time deleted the last time around for track infringements. So the R&B racing team obviously working very hard. It's a last minute change, I believe, at the R&B racing crew to put Mohamed Afriki Kwan into the car. So obviously an interesting situation as we're looking at the number 90, that is uh, Chin Jun San for the AAI Motorsport car. And I'm afraid Chen Jin San is not going to be able to go uh, any faster at this point in the session. Certainly, it looks as though that car is not going to go any further for qualifying two. And it looks like the team are getting themselves ready for Q3. So it is now the team that is currently in pit road, the AAI Motorsport team that is at the top spot. That is Jesse Kroon, the Finnish driver, having brought the car into the pits. There is the number 15, that is the BMW that currently leads the way in qualifying driver two. And Jesse Kroon, the Finnish driver that has been able to put the car into the top spot. So full credit to uh, Jesse Kroon. Looks as though it's going to be two different manufacturers up at the top spot because we had the Kraft Bamboo car uh, going fastest of all in the first qualifying group. And now it is the AAI Motorsport BMW that is at the top spot of Jesse Kroon. Uh, Yu Kwai. The young man from Hong Kong has put the absolute car currently provisional second. The Viper Niza car is up to third now. Dominic Ang behind the wheel. And the EBM Giga Porsche of Nazim Asman is in fourth place. The Malaysian on home turf. And Peter Cox was in the top five, I was going to say. But now the Harmony Racing Ferrari of Alex Imperatore has got themselves back up into the top six once again. Imperatore going third quickest as we watch Yu Kwai. And I'm afraid the R&B Racing... A uh, car has had its lap time deleted for track limits at turn 15. That's not good news for Chan Sai Wei, who is now going to have to set another pace lapping, uh, another uh, uh, pace lap time. Otherwise, they're going to be at the bottom of the table for qualifying two. As we watch Yu Kwai in the bright yellow and white absolute Audi, negotiating the final hairpin, just trying to get the squeak on the throttle at exactly the right time. And you can see just how much curve they're using, a little bit of dust kicked up. But what can you quite do in terms of lap time and position across the line? Second! Second for the absolute Audi of you quite. So that's where they were before, but they have made a bit of a gain and they are 0.298 off the ultimate pace of Jesse Kroon in the AAI BMW. But the Harmony Racing Ferrari has come back up to third position now with the help of Alex Imperatore as we look at Chan Sai Wei in the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket, the sole GT Cup car. They've managed to do a 2 minute 15.0. Not a bad lap time for a GT Cup team, but certainly waiting to see what happens next over the course of proceedings as we watch out on the circuit. The absolute racing car continuing to try and make strides. That is Yu Kwai. In the first sector, he's done a 29.143, so nothing particularly spectacular on this occasion from Yu Kwai. And I would estimate that if you're three tenths down in the first sector, it's going to take a bit of hard work to bring the car back up to the top spot. Not impossible, 
but certainly looking a little bit slender in terms of chances of getting up to the top spot. What I do like, though, is that the different styles and uh, grades of the drivers, a uh, combination, of course, of uh, silver license holders uh, all the way through to uh, the competitors with uh, bronze. It's definitely going to be a very interesting one for all of the contenders out there. So is the Absolute Racing car going to get a little bit more speed out of it? There's only four cars out on the circuit at this late stage of qualifying. The R&B car of Mohamed Afiq Kwan has managed to get the car into seventh position. There's also been another time deleted. That is the Be Quick Absolute car. Oh dear, that's Peter Cox. He's uh, uh, overshot turn six for track limits. And so that team is back down to P6. And I should point out as well, with very little time to make an impact, as into the pits to bail out of the lap comes the absolute racing Audi of Yukwai. And I think there's the confirmation now that Jesse Kroon has gone fastest in Group 2. Nobody else out there is on a challenging lap, so Jesse Kroon can be very happy with his lot there. Fastest in the group. That'll do very nicely for the AAI BMW team. Obviously, for the starting grid, you'll have to stick around with the Sipang 12 hours on the web and on the social media feeds as well. Do you follow along with the up-to-the-minute moments? There is uh, the 91 car of Chen Yinyu, who is the fastest of the GT3 AM category, I do believe, cars. So fascinating to see how everybody has done it together. Now, this time, the eight cars in the GT3 category are at the top eight, leaving the AM category cars and the GT3 Cup car uh, trailing in the wake. So that is a much more linear uh, set of laps done by the competitors in GT3 qualifying uh, Group 2. But the provisional results tell us that Jesse Kroon in the AAI BMW was the fastest one from qualifying two with a best time of a 2 minute 4.552, just over a quarter of a second quicker than Yu Kwai in the absolute racing Audi. Then Alex Imperatori put the Harmony Ferrari into third position ahead of Dominic Ang and Nazim Asma, the two Malaysians. Here it is. Here's the provisional result of Q2 then. The AAI BMW of Jesse Kroon, a quarter of a second faster than the absolute Audi of Yu Kwai, and then the Harmony Ferrari of Alex Imperatore. Dominic Ang and Nazim Asman putting the Malaysians in the top five for Vibeniza and EBN Giga, respectfully. And then Peter Cox down there in P6 in the B Quick Absolute Racing Car, but it's an endurance, not a sprint. And then Afi Kukwan in the RB car was seventh quickest in that particular class. And then we had uh, Jeffrey Lee. Eighth in the Craft Bamboo, a big difference compared to the previous session. You saw the AMAC car going fastest in the AM category with William Porter, and then the teammates in the AAI BMWs of Chen Jun San and Chen Yin Yu. And then we have uh, Moderna's John Shen ahead of Chan Sai Wei in the FM Motorsport and Silver Rocket car. So there is the car that was the quickest in Q2 in the hands of the Finn, Jesse Kroon. But there are three different levels of driver in each team. So these three qualifying sessions combined are going to give us a fascinating grid for the start of the Sepang 12 Hours, which takes place and kicks off at 2 p.m. local time here in Kuala Lumpur. So depending on where you're watching around the world, you will obviously have to uh, keep an eye on that. But the start of racing is going to be in a little over three hours time local time. And I'll correct myself instantly and say that it's uh, nearly uh, just under four hours time, uh, the start of racing. And we're just being told that qualifying dri for driver number three in each car is going to start at 9.50 local time. That is seven minutes from now. So definitely an interesting start to proceedings then in the Sepang 12 hours. A lot of... Uh, Changes to the event, obviously, since its last running, which was all the way back in 2016. So it is uh, great to return uh, to the uh, battles in front of us. So everybody getting themselves uh, into position for a stunning uh, race battle. Now, obviously, we're told that there's been a slight change uh, in proceedings uh, and uh, the driver list. Uh, it was going to be uh, Lu Wei who was in the R&B racing car, but it is now uh, Afiki Kwan who has taken over that particular car. 
So we'll obviously have to uh, come back to that story a little bit in preparation for the race itself. But we do know the starting drivers now for each car. So this is a good opportunity to look into that in a little bit more detail. So the starting car, uh, the starting driver, I should say, for each car is uh, an interesting piece of information. The R&B car, it's going to be Afik Ikwan that takes the start a little later on at 2 p.m. local time here in Kuala Lumpur. The AAI Motorsport BMW number 15, well, that is going to be started by Chen Chenhua. And then we also have the EBM Giga racing car. That's going to be started by Adrian De Silva in the Absolute Racing car. The number 18 Audi, well, that's going to be Andrew Harianto, the Indonesian, that starts the race. Uh, this is all provisional, of course, uh, but those are the drivers that have been nominated for each team. Be Quick Absolute, well, their man, Hank Kicks, is going to be the one that starts the race, and rightly so, considering it's going to be his first rolling start in GT racing for almost a decade. Uh, then we have uh, the AMAC Motorsport team. Their car is going to be started by the Australian Andrew McPherson. At the Viper Niza Aston Martin, it's going to be Douglas Q that starts the race. At Craft Bamboo, well, it was uh, Sandy Stivik that set the pace in Q1. Uh, set the pace in Q1, I should say. But Liang Jaitong will be the one who actually starts the race a little later today. In the sister car. Uh, apologies, no, that's the Craft Bamboo car. There's only one of those. Then the AAI Motorsport Twins, the BMWs. It'll be uh, Wei Chai Liu who sets the race a flutter in the start initially later in the number 90 car and in the 91 car this car it is actually going to be started by the man you see in the car Tarnat Sathan Thirakul who is about to go out for Q3 he will also start the race in the modern motorsport the car number 216 uh, the combination of Chia Shen and Chia it's going to be John Shen that actually starts the race for them and in the Harmony Racing Ferrari Obviously, a fantastic uh, battle of drivers, but it's going to be Wu Ruhua, who is uh, heading out onto the circuit now for qualifying that will start the race. And then finally, in the GT Cup car, the FM Motorsport X Silver Rocket, uh, that's going to be started by Li Jia. So there is Chen Chen Hua, the number 15 AAI Motorsport car. And obviously, having already seen Jens Klingman and Jesse Kroon behind the wheel, this is the man who's going to be starting the race in the Subang 12 hours, so very important for him to get a final run worth being happy about. And you can see there, look, the cooling that is having to be done uh, for the driver. It is getting very hot here already. Don't forget that it's only, uh, at this point, 9.46 local time. Q3 is going to start in about uh, four minutes' time, just under four minutes' time, in fact. But it is worth pointing out that in terms of air temperature, it is uh, pretty darn hot at this uh, phase of proceedings now. So it is a very interesting situation for all of the competitors. They know how tough it's going to be. Drivers getting themselves down to the end of the pit lane to get themselves up ready for the start. But the session itself will not get underway until 10 minutes to 10 in the morning here in Sepang. So obviously everybody getting very excited and very eager as to what is going to happen from here on out. So the final situations are being geared up then as the last drivers are being prepared in their cars to go out for qualifying. There's the Ang Jatong in the Craft Bamboo. That's the car that went fastest in Q1, don't forget, in the hands of Sandy Stuvik. So what can they do in the third session? Obviously, all of the accumulated times from all three sessions are going to be taken into account. Ready for the start of the Sepang 12 hours at uh, 2 p.m. local time here in Kuala Lumpur. The race is actually going to be eight hours in duration. So once the circuit goes dark, the checkered flag will come out at 10 o'clock in the evening local time here in Malaysia. And that's going to be a very interesting start to proceedings as far as everybody is concerned. The competitors giving themselves up ready for action. If you've just joined us, you've only missed the first two uh, qualifying sessions. There is one more 15-minute session to go, and that will set the pace for the first Sepang 12 hours since 2016. Great organizational work by the boys at top speed to get them back into the running once again for this fabulous event. And it's great to see everybody gearing up and ready after what has already been a very busy start to the day. But in GT3 and 
the GT3 AM categories, we already have a very interesting challenge uh, for the top spot. But now the drivers are giving themselves up ready for the third. One minute to the pit lane exiting. Uh, the pit lane exit being opened, I should say, for the third and final qualifying session. 15 minutes they'll get out onto the circuit once again, and that will obviously set the tone for the weekend. But we had two different cars up in the top spot uh, for these last two sessions. I am amazed to say, despite a couple of run wides, touch wood, and I am touching wood at this point, uh, the desk in front of me fortunately happens to be made of it, uh, there have been no major incidents to speak of in qualifying one or two, other than drivers running wide over track limits. It looks as though every driver getting the hang of the fact that, well, when you've got eight hours and you've got 12 other cars around you, uh, you really want to be the one that comes out on top. So you're going to be as conservative as possible now. Try and save a set of tyres and save the car a little bit heading to Europe so we can do some more scenario training with a couple of the drivers. So there we go. The competitors gearing up ready for the start of qualifying driver three. Here we go. And again, we are told that any lap is reported completely beyond the track limits will be immediately deleted. So the EBM Giga car of Reed Harker and the Modena of Christian Chia, the first two cars to head out onto the circuit. There goes the Harmony Ferrari, Wu Ruwa, going out onto the circuit in the hope that he can measure up to the same sort of pace already seen from his stable mates, in particular, Alexandre Impratori, the Swiss driver, making a massive improvement on his run. So, so far, just the three cars out on the circuit. Make that a fourth as Chon Thong now comes out onto the circuit, the uh, racer from Hong Kong. So as the cars head out for their final session, this is going to, over the course of the timesheets, set the tone of the starting grid for this first race back into the world of Sepang. Fabulous place, a fabulous facility. My first visit to the circuit was actually for karting uh, just over the back of the main race circuit itself back before the AMI Asia Cup in 2020. But I did get the fabulous taste of this place and the first two days of being in Malaysia, I have to say, uh, it wasn't going to be too long from my side uh, for trying to get back into uh, racing out here as well because it's a country that I fell in love with incredibly quickly. And I can tell you that two, uh, two days at the beginning of 2020 is not enough to whet the appetite. I want to keep coming back to this magnificent country and see what it has to offer. The drivers are certainly doing that. As out onto the circuit is going to go the iMac car. So that is number 51, the iMac car, but it's the AMAC Motorsport team. They head out onto the course. And there goes the R&B racing car out onto the circuit now in the GT3 category. That is a fabulous new challenge there from uh, their young driver, Ye Hong Lee. So out onto the circuit come the last couple of competitors. That's the AMAC car going out. And that is Andre Heimgartner, the New Zealander, behind the wheel of that one now. So having had the two Aussies, it's now time for the Kiwi to uh, get up to speed. That's the thing about endurance racing, though. All past differences between nations are forgotten. They're all there for one solid independent purpose, and that is to genuinely continue the progress that is being made and seeing how it goes. But there is the 51, the AMAC car of Andre Hamgartner. We're still waiting, ready for the first flying lap to come through. We're finally getting drivers starting to finish laps in general but there's still that expected air of frustration you can tell here from a few teams they were hoping to have a few more of their friends and rivals to play with but certainly in terms of the quality and the depth of the field here you've got drivers in this field who have competed and been towards the sharp end of the field of in the likes of Formula 1 GT Le Mans 24 hours there's some big names have come through on the starting grid for this one and with just under 12 minutes to go the pace has initially been set by the ebm giga racing team so it's done a 2 19 8 but none of these early lap times are really going to be representative of what the cars can actually do so a fabulous situation so a really exciting run for the competitors there is the harmony ferrari this is wu who is uh, still trying to uh, set the pace. We've obviously saw some good performances from Alexandra Imperatori in the previous session. Didn't quite get up to the top three in quite as smooth a run as he would have liked to. 
this is a simple and straightforward complex essentially uh, uh, format for karting I have three different sessions in the three different uh, sessions obviously we've seen many different types of driver and Wu Ruwa the Chinese driver currently looking for the pace but you, as you can see they haven't actually set the lap time yet but you can bet that uh, when uh, Wu Ruwa comes through and sets the pace then they're going to leap up uh, the order once again we're getting purple sectors now the fastest of all in the first sector happens to be Liang, Zhong, uh, Liang Zhetong who is in the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes fastest of all in the second sector now is Reed Harker who goes top spot in the EVM Giga car as he comes across the line so that is a time of 2.11.864 uh, because Christian Chia has actually gone half a second quicker and now we watch Wu Ruwa the Harmony Ferrari just guide it through that final hairpin don't overcook it don't put too much pressure on himself he's been quite careful through that final turn I think uh, Wu Ruwa is obviously very careful about going out there and stuffing it into the wall and then obviously that would be qualifying game over but not only that it would give his mechanics a lot of hard work for the next four hours rather than just make a subtle adjustment here in the first hour and away we go so Sean Tong has put the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket into the top spot on a 2.097 that's really the first majorly competitive lap time from anybody out there everyone else so far in the first few minutes has just been going through the motions warming up tires warming up brakes trying to get everything up to temperature but certainly it's all going well for the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket team at this moment because their GT3 Cup car is at the top. Now there is Jasmine Jafar, who was for quite a while at the early 2010s widely regarded as Malaysia's big hope for international competition. But the problem with F2 and F3 is that you've only got 22 seats on the grid in one and 24 seats available in the other. It's getting very, very tough indeed. Nine minutes to go and the Craft Bamboo comes up to the top. Yang Jaitong has gone fastest provisionally on a 2.074. So they're going about two seconds a lap faster on average than the GT3 Cup car. Certainly in terms of the fastest of the raw one lap pace. Here is the man though who holds a very unique distinguish, uh, a very unique record. Marcus Winkelhock, number 18 absolute racing out. He seemed to have lost him unfortunately. But he led his only ever Grand Prix start. I'm fairly sure no other racing driver in history can credit that to him. Uh, can share the same credit is what I should have said. Out of the final turn, that's one of the Porsches really leaning on it. The black and white machine trying to charge forward. Just the one car that has not gone out onto the circuit. The AAI Motorsports car number 90. I'm very sure that is because they don't actually have a third driver in that particular car. Everyone else does. Every other car has managed to get to that point. The EBM Giga car goes top. Reed Harker returns to the top spot on a 205.653. That is 1.8 seconds quicker than anything anybody else has come up with. Yang Chai Tong in the Craft Bamboo and uh, F Motorsport Silver Rocket now third for Sean Tong. But uh, the Harmony Ferrari of Wu Ruwa. Still has some time to make up on the sound of things. Modern and Motorsport is uh, top five. So the young man from Hong Kong doing a good job. And then uh, Chen Junhua is next up in the AI uh, Motorsports number 15. Although car 88 has just had the third lap deleted from the timesheets for a track limit infringement. That is Liang Zhou Tong. And that's promoted Talat Satin Thirakul into second place in his AI Motorsports car number 91. And up to the top spot comes Jasmine Jafar. Jasmine Jafar has just put the Viper Niza car uh, across the line. And Jasmine Jafar has just gone fastest at 205.331 for the Aston Martin driver. It's good to see uh, Jasmine Jafar pick up a solid race contract for the season ahead. Definitely bonus as well for him. So he's got plenty to be excited about as the year continues to progress. As we watch Chen Chunhua in the number 15 AI Motorsports car. No pressure, but that's the car that went fastest in uh, Group 2 for Jesse Kroon. So this is the same car, barely any adjustments majorly made to the car, other than to just keep Chen Chinua essentially. Better to be safe and sorry on that one. Car 15 has just had lap three deleted for track limits infringement. That is uh, the AI Motorsports of uh, Chen Chinua. 
this is the car that we are watching that has just been given a track limits deletion and obviously when that happens in time qualifying you know you're pushing the limit of what the car can do but then you're having to drive a certain way to get a bank a lap down and the difference when you're at pro level to getting that very fast sensation in the back as you go through some of these fast and flowing sweepers it's still very very tense indeed so just about five and a half minutes left of this session the absolute racing car of Marcus Winkelhock has now come up to the top spot with a very fast lap indeed from the German talent a two minute 4.323 and that is a full eight tenths of a second quicker than Christopher Haase, the fellow German in the B Quick Absolute car. Jasmine Jafar currently third, Reid Harker in fourth, the New Zealander in front of Ye Hong Lee. And then we have Talat Satanthila Kuhl in the AAA Motorsports number 91. They've gone sixth fastest. Yang Jia Tong in the Craft Bamboo is currently seventh. And then Chen Chen Hua is eighth in the AAI Motorsports machine in front of the FM Motorsports Silver Rocket car of Sean Tong. And then the Harmony Racing car. All right, I admit it. Tenth position is not really where we would have liked to have seen Wuvru Hua. And this is the Ferrari 488, the 2022 version of the car. Uh, the 2020 version of the car, I should say. It's not going to be too long after the 296 LM GT3 program later in the year before I see a few more of these customers getting hold of the new equipment. As we watch the Ferrari of Wuhu Wa. Where are they currently? 10th. They really need to put a fast and clean lap on the board. Not so easy when your back is to the wall and you've got four minutes and 20 seconds to deliver. And that is the very important factor of that dynamic. It's not just about doing a good job for the benefit of me, you know, enjoying my time. It has to affect everybody around you as well. So the closing few minutes of qualifying then, Quite an important run for Christian Chia, the Canadian, currently 12th. The AAI, motor, the AAI Motorsport number 90 has not gone out, but that is because of the fact they do not have a third driver, which is going to be very difficult to cope with here in Sepang, not the least because it's hotter here than uh, in many locations. Marcus Winkelhock in the absolute car, trying to go faster still than the lap they've already done, which was a 2 minute 4.323, but Marcus Winkelhock settling in quite nicely now to his berth here in Sepang. Three and a half minutes still to endure of this third and final qualifying session. But it does it does give us plenty to talk about. Car number four has had their fifth time deleted or track limits at turn four. Now that is Ye Hong Lee who has come a cropper there in the R&B machine. As we continue to watch the charge for the man trying to work his way further forward. Marcus Winkelhock for Absolute Racing is the number 18 who leads the way here. He is a sort of teammate, I suppose. Christopher Haase in the Big Quick Absolute car. It's a sister 1-2 for the team at this precise moment in time. But Marcus Winkelhock, as you can see, is trying to push to extend his own run. A 2-minute 4.323. So it's an absolute 1-2. Winkelhock ahead of Haase. Then the Viper Nizza Aston Martin of Jasmine Jafar. Then the R&B car of Ye Hong Lee who is in front of EBM Giga Racing's Reed Harker, and then the AAI Motorsport number 91 in sixth. That is for Talent Southampton Cool. Uh, seventh place for the Craft Bamboo team that led the first group, uh, the first practice session. Yang Jai Tong is uh, there in seventh position at the moment, the young man from Hong Kong. Uh, then Chen Chen Hua in the AAI Motorsport number 15. Oh, goodness for that. Sean Vong in uh, ninth position at the moment in the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket. Then Wu Hua in the Harmony Ferrari. At 10th position, slumming it, question mark? We'll let that one hang in the air. Andre Hamgardner has put the AMAC Motorsport car into 11th place. 12th position for Christian Chia for the Moderna Motorsports Porsche as well. But there is Marcus Winkelhock looking good for the Absolute Racing team to score an unbeatable 1-2 finish here. Caps come down to half a second between Winkelhock and Haas 8, and then a subsequent 7 tenths of a second gap between Jasmine Jafar and Marius Winkelhock. It's only about 1.2 seconds really tops in the grand scheme of things. That is easy to find if you're of a racing mentality. It's into the pits comes the 18 of uh, Marcus Winkelhock and that is proof to me that they are not going to set another lap time because obviously with a minute and a half to go they can't get out of the pits, get around the lap and then shake hands with the plucky young Englishman here in the box. 
But Marcus Finkelhock looking very good indeed. The car 88 has had lap six delete different track limits at turn six. That is Nen Jai Tong for Craft Bamboo in the AMG Mercedes. Amazing, isn't it, how from one session to the next, a car that was looking strong suddenly off the boil. And it all comes down to how the drivers cope with this, how they prove BN. And through comes the 88. That is the Craft Bamboo AMG Mercedes. This time, it's Yang Jai Tong who is behind the wheel. So there is Liang Jai Tong, hoping this final lap of qualifying is really going to pay dividends. But unfortunately, I fear he's literally just doing so to put another lap under his belt. Of course, the minimum number of laps you do, the higher that is, the more likely it is to get yourself the benefits of doing so over the sharp end of the field. Making sure he shared all that. Incredible day for these engineers went straight into today, knowing that the car was going to be quicker enough in his hands. We're in the final few sessions, seconds of the time, the final 10 seconds of qualifying for the Sepang 12 Hours 2023. And you're looking at Ye Hong Lee in the RB Lamborghini. Look at the twitch under braking as the front end starts to stuff itself into the apex, just about holding the car off and rolling back on the power midway through the apex to catch a good hint of things. Across the line, a 2 minute 5.912 for Ye Hong Lee. That's not a bad end to the day for him. That's certainly not a bad run to qualify. And Ye Hong Lee has actually put the car in fourth place on a best time of a 2.055. So that's only just a whisker over the best time that uh, the man from Absolute Racing, Marcus Winkelhock, has ever tested with each other. But that is absolutely where the Absolute Racing team Wanted to finish Q3. Marcus Vingelhock in front of Christo Haase in second place. Then Yasmin Javar for Viper Niza in third. R&B and EBM Giga in the top five. So as the final few drivers coming to finish their laps, we'll go through the rundown of Q3. If you want to see what happens in terms of the starting finish line before we get back into position ready for coverage, myself and Sean Henschel would for the Sepang 12 Hours. If you can't wait that long, then you'll have to head to the Sepang 12 Hours website. So, a fascinating end then to the qualifying. Three different teams out of the top spot across the three sessions. So it's definitely given everybody a chance to really knuckle down and figure out what this car is about. So, an absolute one-two for Vingal Hakanaze. Five minutes there will be Jasmine Jafar. And then Ye Hong Lee will be in the R&B car in fourth position in front of the EMB. EBM uh, Giga Racing Team alongside the Estonian. Oh, sorry, I got the Estonians. Well, that is the Kiwi that has done a fair job there in fifth position, Reed Harker. And there is Christopher Haase completing an absolute one two in qualifying here. The Audi is very strong in the third session. Now that's going to intrigue me in one of two ways because either they're pointing out that uh, the belt is probably a good idea in all cases to increase the validity and professionalism. But absolutely racing one and two after the third session. Ningle Hock and Haase uh, managed to get it out. Viper Niza for Jasmine Jafar, the Aston Martin going third quickest. The R&B uh, racing machine of Ye Hong Lee having already had a very entertaining first session. Then it is Reed Harker, the Kiwi who is staying in the EBM Giga Racing cart, uh, car sorry, to start us off with. And then the AAI Motorsports uh, number 91 of Talat Satan Tirakul in sixth position. The Graf Bamboo of the Ang Chai Tong in seventh ahead of uh, Chen Chen Hua for AAI Motorsports. The FM Motorsports Silver Rocket, the lone GT3 Cup of Sean Tong uh, coming through. There is the provisional result then for qualifying driver three. Marcus Winkelhawk in front of Christopher Haase and Absolute Racing 1 2. Then the Viper Niza of Jasmine Jafar. The RB Racing Machine of Ye Hong Lee. And then Reed Harker in the EBM Giga and Tanat Southern Tirakul in sixth place in the second of the, oh, sorry, the leading AAI Motorsport being double, I should say. Yang Chai Tong, Chen Chen Hua, Sean Tong, and Wu Ruhua. Uh, so Wu Ruhua is definitely going to be a tricky one for the Ferrari fans down in 10th position. And then the final three the AMAC Motorsport Porsche of Andre Hamgartner, the Modena Motorsport Porsche of Christian Chia. And then there was nobody going out in AAI Motorsports car number 90 because there were not three cars in the field. So, a fabulous situation then. 
And a great start to proceedings here at the Sabang 12 Hours. The race itself will kickstart at 2 p.m. To follow along with everything that's going on, uh, we are going to have uh, a fascinating race battle. Obviously, you can keep up to date with everything that's going on on the social media channel for the Sepang 12 Hours. You can also use the hashtag in finding out things uh, in terms of the uh, quality of the battle coming up in the Sepang 12 Hours itself on social media. You can use the hashtag Sepang 12 Hours. Nice and easy. Everybody will know who you're talking about and what we're discussing as we just uh, close out on the highlights from the three sessions. No major wobbles, no big thrills and spills, nobody ending up in the wall, no major damage to talk of, just three sessions where the drivers are literally trying to get the most out of their cars from the outset. That was a pure qualifying session. And really good to see that the drivers were able to really work the car to try and get the cars up to a better starting position on the grid. There's Pity putting back to in the AAI motorsports car, really passionate about pushing this team forward, really loves his motorsport. And he's one of those people who, you know, it's funny they sort of uh, alluded to a, a fantastic battle out there on the course. Because now the battle will rage again for these Eight hours around the course is a return for the Sepang 12 hours, yes, but for this first race back after seven years, it has been deemed that an eight hour duration is going to be the uh, most pleasant return to form. But by the time you take into account all the practice sessions, the qualified sessions and everything, that pretty much does that up to the full capacity of 12 hours. So uh, a little bit of uh, free license needed with that one. But a fabulous run for the Sepang 12 hours up to this point. We do hope you're going to join us uh, for the entirety of the race battle itself. When that kicks off, uh, the coverage will start about 10 minutes uh, before the race itself. The biggest wobble really in qualifying came from Chen Yin Yu in the second qualifying group in the AAI Motorsport BMW. Everybody else uh, really went through the session in uh, a pretty fine state of affairs. Uh, we're good to see everybody really pushing in and getting a good showpiece together but three different crews in the top positions at the end of a very exciting run. So everybody getting their run and getting their turn at the front. And again, this is all gonna come down to tactics and strategy. As some drivers would have been able to favor certain drivers over another. Always gonna be a tricky one. There is the EBM Giga car, very easy to spot in its uh, zebra camouflage livery. Uh, Reed Harker, the New Zealander keeping it together. There's the 88, that is the Craft Band Blue Car, which is currently being shared by three very talented individuals, Jeffrey Lee, Yang Jai Tong, and Sandy Stuvik of Thailand. They've all had a very sturdy start to their Sepang 12 hours build up. And there was Yu Kwai, who uh, did a fair job in his run. Then obviously after group two, we had the drivers come out in group three and set the pace once again. Well, we've had three different crews from three different cars in the top three positions. Great to see everybody gearing up ready for an exciting showcase. Wu Verwa, certainly not able to match up to the same sort of pace that his teammates had in the Harmony Racing Ferrari, but hopefully once the race gets going and once things settle in, there's a very good chance that it's gonna be, <laughs> what's the best way to describe this? Sensationalist is probably the wrong word, but certainly intriguing, I would say, Probably going to be the best way to describe how things are going to play out here in the Spain 12 hours. Let's be realistic about the situation. The numbers are not quite as high as you'd like for a race of this duration, but obviously you've got to take into consideration and context the fact that Malaysia is only just really uh, opening its doors up to international competition following the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic. It's been quality over quantity that's really been the focus of the teams and the organizers at top speed trying to bring everybody back up to the sharp end of the dais. So uh, it's definitely been very intriguing and entertaining as the race battle is set to get underway here in Sepang. But the absolute racing team getting a 1-2 finish there at the end of all of that. Although I am being told that Mr. Harsley's last time has actually been deleted. That's going to put him to third position as Liang Jaitong is the car that picks up the benefit of it all. So... That is your lot for qualifying in the Sepang 12 hours. 
2023. The race itself is going to be kicking off at 2 p.m. local time here in Kuala Lumpur. So you've got just under three and a half hours uh, before we get ourselves ready. We're going to build up to the race itself. From myself, Jake Sanson, and my colleague, uh, Sean, yeah, it's going to be a really exciting battle. We're going to have a great time. So do join us for the Sepang 12 hours. It's going to be a very exciting start to proceedings. Join me and my colleague Sean Henshelwood for the start of the Sepang 12 hours a little later on today, 2 p.m. local time. We kick things off, and it's a great return to the Kuala Lumpur area of Asia and the Sepang circuit for the first 12-hour race since 2016. Bring it on, and we'll see you in just a few short hours.